do a Bible reading for you guys tonight. Um, I'm going to be reading John chapter 21. We'll be talking about Jesus and the miraculous catch of fish. And Jesus reinstates Peter. And we're going to re be reading a song, if I can talk. Um, Psalm 120. It's a really short song. Proverbs chapter 16, verses 16 and 17. We will be reading in the New International Version. I can't tell. I don't know what's wrong with you. Okay. Now, here in John chapter 21, we are at the point I haven't read, um, done a Bible reading in a while. So, we're at the point in the Bible now where Jesus has already been crucified and he's already been resurrected. He's already been raised from the dead. And this is the time now when Jesus is walking on the earth and many people have seen him after he was crucified and resurrected. He was on the earth for 40 some days before he went to heaven. And this is one of the occasions where saw him that we'll be reading today and Jesus pretty much pretty much tells Peter his future what his death is going to be like and Peter will ask Jesus you know like what about them what about this person and Jesus is like what if I want them to stay alive until I return what is that to you He didn't say that this person was definitely going to stay alive when he came back. He wasn't saying they wasn't going to die. He was just saying, what if I want them to? What is that to you? So, you'll be seeing that today. And this is when this time period is. This is when Jesus was raised from the dead. He's on the earth. And people are seeing him. And they don't recognize him. Nobody's really, I don't think nobody's really expecting for him to actually be raised from the dead. They were hoping, but I don't, I don't think they really was waiting for it, you know. So it takes a minute, but then they always realize it's the Lord that they see. Okay, so let's get started. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two other disciples were together. Hot. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. They were very skilled fishermen. That's what their job was. They were fishermen for a living, a lot of them. Peter was one. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. But that was in the plan. Jesus had a plan. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not recognize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord! As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. It was time for breakfast. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. 
It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have some breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, this is what I was talking about, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Now we're not talking about real animals here. Jesus is our, Jesus is the shepherd and we're his sheep. So he's referring to all the people. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you to where you do not want to go. He's referring to what kind of death Peter is going to have. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would be glorifying God, by, by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. That's what Jesus told Peter, follow me. He wanted him to follow after him in his death. And this is why Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? Now Peter asked Jesus, when Jesus told him to follow me. When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Like, why doesn't he have to have this kind of death? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. That wasn't true. It wasn't. That's not what Jesus said. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? Like, whatever I want to happen, or whatever I want to do, why are you concerned with it? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have enough room for the books that would be written. And that is uh, John chapter 21. I'd like to continue reading on and on from there. Well, we got our psalm now. Psalm 120, a song of ascents. I call on the Lord in my distress, and he answers me. Save me, Lord, from lying lips and from deceitful tongues. What will he do to you? And what more besides you, deceitful tongue? He will punish you with the warrior's sharp arrows, the burning coals of the broom bush. I'm sorry, I cannot talk with burning coals of the broom bush. Woe to me that I dwell in Meshek, that I live among the tents of Kedar. Too long have I lived among those who hate peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. And that was all of Psalm 120, a song of ascents. It's a little short song. And now our two Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 16 and 17. How much better 
to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver. The highway of the upright avoids evil. Those who guard their ways preserve their lives. I've got the prayer list to do sure. Okay, so that was the end of the Bible reading today. Now I'm going to get our prayer list out. Take these off. I guess what's making me not be able to read that well. Got the little cute adorable book here. Okay, so here's the prayer request for today. I would like to ask you all to please pray for my friend Michelle. Um, she really needs prayers. I don't want to say why, because I don't know if I don't like to do it unless somebody tells me that I can say a reason. I'm asking for prayer because some people that I, when I put prayer on, I'm not talking about Michelle or um, anyone in particular, but I've put prayer requests on for people before and they got mad just because I put them on a prayer list. That was somebody in my family. Okay, so please pray for my friend Michelle. Please pray for Sandy and Rosie. Please pray for Sherm's mom, Patty Haynes. Um, you know she's been in the nursing home. She, um, they moved her to a new nursing home here a while back after she got out of the hospital again. And Sherm called her yesterday and they talked for a tiny little bit, but um, during that time, his mom told him that they are calling hospice in for her. So please keep her in your prayers, and she's in a lot of pain. So please, please pray that her um, pain will ease. And please pray for her husband Ernie, sure stepdad. And please pray for Ryan and Leanna. That's um, Patty's nephew, Sherm's cousin, and his girlfriend. Um, please pray for Garnet Boyer, and please also pray for her granddaughter, Clara. Clara's going through a lot. She, she's wanted something off her life, like I have, and I know I'll never get it. But I know God has a plan and knows what's best. But I pray that Cora will be blessed. And I hope she doesn't turn out like me, not being able to have what I've always wanted. I hope she gets, it's a baby. She's praying for a baby. They had a, she got pregnant here a while back, but she had a miscarriage. So please pray that Clara is blessed with a child. Please pray for Cindy Welsh. Her back's been hurting. It was really bad last week. And please pray for um, Cindy's husband, my uncle Jim. His sinuses are acting up really bad right now. Plus he has um, problems with his feet. He has to go to the foot doctor and get shots of these hills and stuff. And go to the chiropractor and get him and crack a lot. Um, please pray for my Aunt Dora Carver. Please pray for Dad and his girlfriend Jody and Ronnie and Nikki, the kids. Two of the kids. Dad does a lot for people. He works at the VA and um, he helps also not just to take care of the vet veterans, but um, veterans also that have been that or have been or on or on currently drugs and he helps them to get off drugs and stuff. He takes really good care of people there. And it's dangerous. Some of the things that he has to, you know, do. So please pray for him. Please pray for Mom, Abby, Sammy, and Ricky. 
please pray for Chase and happy birthday yesterday to my Aunt Pat. Please pray for my cousin Jason. Please pray for Ann Kim. If any of you remember, um, we were praying for a guy on our prayer list, Kenny Wellman. He had had um, two transplants. And um, he passed away. Not, at, not during the transplant or anything, but um, a while after from things. He, he was doing really good, doing really good. And um, he got sick again and he passed away. We all pretty much grew up together, Kenny and cousin Jason and my sister and all Kenny's brothers. Please pray for my friend Diane. Uh, my uncle's really good friends with her husband. Um, their five-year-old grandson passed away the other day from cancer. Five years old. It's just, that's horrible. It's heartbreaking. I can't even imagine, do not want to imagine what their family's going through. That would be very, very hard. It's always extra hard, I think, when it's a child. Please pray for my nephew, Jimmy. Please pray for Melly and Gabe, Toby, Kaylee, Kinsley and Olson. Please pray for Norman. And please pray for Sherm's uncle Wayne. He is dying. He was in Vietnam, in the Vietnam War, and um, he's dying from the effects of Agent Orange. It is, it's because of his kidneys, and it's from the Agent Orange that was over there in Vietnam during the war. So please pray for him. And I wish I wish you guys all would pray for Sherm's Uncle Wayne and Sherm to be close. Sherm really wants a relationship with him, but it's all up to Wayne and he really does they really he really just doesn't talk to Sherm invited him to our wedding and everything and they just get married and he didn't come. Especially with him now. Sherm's always wanting to come around and talk to him and stuff. But, and a lot of people say that Sherm looks like he's Uncle Wayne. They both have red hair. Sherm really wants to get close to him. pray that Wayne finds it in his heart to talk to Sherm and stuff. Because they're not going to have, you know, all that long with him passing away. It's heartbreaking if you can't, like, you want to be so close to someone that they don't want to be close to you. And there's no reason why, you know. It's really sad. I wish they would, he would talk to Sherm and, you know, they could be close like an uncle and a nephew should be. But Sherm really wants to be close with him. He always has. And I pray, we want to pray also that Sherm's mom and Wayne start getting along again because they haven't talked in a walk in years now, and um, one of them doesn't want to talk to the other, so that's another reason, I think, why he won't talk to Sean. So, um, I'm going to pray for them to all get close and stuff before something does happen. You know, Wayne could get a miracle, and he may not pass away. Patty could get a miracle, and 
we could sure like it both die before they even do. You don't know when your time's up. It's because, you know, you're sick and the doctors say you're dying doesn't mean we're not going to die before them, you know. Um, so I just pray that they would take the effort to get everybody get close again before somebody does. It's just really, it's just really heartbreaking. But I know how it is because my family's the same way. So I know exactly how it is. I haven't talked to my sisters. My sisters ain't talked to me in years. So the sister that I seen last and was talking to was Nellie, and that's been three years ago. So or two and a half years ago. Anyways, I will let you guys go now. Um, it's really. It's a lot of really sad, depressing stuff going on. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and hopefully I'll be back with some kind of video of some type for you guys again soon. Good night, guys. Hope you have a blessed night. Bye.